And of all the facts about motocross that I tell them that blow their mind the most is the idea that most of the riders, we've known that they were good since eight years old. It doesn't work that way. In Little League, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of good eight-year-olds. And the best eight-year-old baseball player very rarely turns out to be the best 28-year-old baseball player. In motocross, many of them are marked men from a very early age, and the accuracy is astounding. It's probably like 75% of the time a really fast eight-year-old turns out to be a really fast pro. That blows people's mind more than anything in any other uh, sport when they come over and I explain to them, oh, yeah, I've known this kid since he's eight. Really? Yeah, because we knew he was good since he was eight, and we go to Loretta's and we see it happen. So absolutely, we got marked men here, Bell Helmets, Whole Shot Award on the line, and these are future stars. You can almost guarantee whoever is fast in this one is going to be a professional someday. Ryder D pulling out the like early him. lead. And of course with that, oh, well that was almost a clean start. It was turn two before we saw one go down, one went off the track, but we were looking at that saying clean start. And a few riders off the edge. You can see a little dust kicking up as these riders jockey for position. Man, a lot of hunger out here in this second moto. Casey Cochran, I see that uh, Suzuki in there in third. So he's in the hunt. Riders hopping, skipping through the Ten Commandments. Man, it is wet now and a lot more difficult to get through. Look at how muddy some of these riders are on their first trip through that section. Yeah, we had a pretty extensive... Uh, uh, water session and uh, also uh, maintenance section with uh, dozers and uh, skid steers and things on the track there a few moments ago. So a lot of work going down, some water trying to, uh, well, uh, obviously grasp hold of the dry soils. And that's the, oh, 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 number 11 swapping out there. Uh, look like about uh, 11th place there, but Dave Orland uh, finishing 26 in moto number one. He's going to have to find himself a, a way to work up through the pack again as he uh, uh, may have uh, taking himself out of a, a top 15 position right off the bat here. Let's see what's going on out of the uh, Rocky Mountain Sweeper. Still position jockeying going on, Jason. I remember the first moto of this one, I was really interested to see Ryder De Francesco is now one of the older riders in this class versus Daxton Benick, who is starting to make the transition from 65s to 85s. Benick hung with him pretty good for a long time in the first moto. He's younger. I talked to Benick's dad. The goal isn't to win. The goal is to just kind of see where you measure up with the kids that have been on 85s for a couple years. Now, Bennett did end up crashing in that one and I think settled for fifth. Nick Romano, also been at this game for a while, got up to the number two spot. It was a Cowie one, two. And how about that? That's exactly what we have early in moto number two. That's it, De Francesco, Romano, Benick, one, two, and three. Casey Cochran in the number four spot aboard the 66. Bose plug is in the number five spot. Hymas, Chance Hymas, the 83, six. Jordan Renfro in seventh. Ryder McNabb in eighth. Colin Allen in ninth. And Matty Jorgensen rounds out your top 10. And taking a look, there's St Stable Orland actually was able to maintain a 15th place. So he must have been a little. Uh, farther up in that uh, top 10 than what I realized as uh, we opened up this first lap of racing. Yeah, tough break for Stav Orland there, back to 15th after that fall. Meanwhile, we're tracking our leader. That is Ryder Francesco out of Bakersfield, California. Second in the class last year. That's why you get that number two plate, the way it works at Loretta's. If you finish in the top 10, you can run that single digit number the next year. You can't select a single digit you can only get it if you earn it. And in the mini cycle classes, if anyone has a single digit number, you know they're fast because that means they were in the top 10, but they were young enough to not age out of the class. Wow, look what's going on in second behind De Francesco right now. Romano maintaining the number two spot. Benick appears to be very aggressive right now and possibly trying to force a pass as he pulls up side by side coming out of the waterworks for just a moment Romano rises to the occasion but I think he knows he's under fire right now yeah absolutely Benick now looking for running room in third place on the number 24 oh two riders are down but the 53 oh this battle for second continues to rage look at that Daxton Benick makes the pass so Benick, uh, I don't know whether he was trying to catch Romano off guard in the early part of this uh, race and just make that pass without him seeing him coming, but whatever it was, he found the speed, he found the line, and he went railing for it. And here he is up to the number two spot, and it almost looks like Benick may be uh, looking ahead right now to Ryder D to see just exactly where he is last time around. There was about a four-second deficit between the first and second place ride, more like three and a half. And look at this. They've only lost a second to Ryder D. And in reality, Benick 
actually turned a faster line. He got around Romano up to second. He's 4.5 seconds behind. He turned a 2.058 and a 2.064. So we're looking at just a little over a half second faster than Ryder D. This could get kind of interesting. If Bennett's got this kind of speed, maybe he will be ready to meet, set the challenge. Yeah, he is uh, about a half a second quicker than DeFrancesco right now as Bennett in the number two spot. So he went a little faster while making the pass on Romano. So Bennett on the move right now. And we're moving too as we watch Ryder D through the Ten Commandments. Casey Cochran is fourth, Base Luke fifth, Chance Hymas is sixth. There is Romano, you just saw Bennett shoot out of the shot in second. This is the third place rider now, Romano out of Bayside, New York. In the storyland. Well, you know, I know Roman, Romano coming into this one was uh, one of the riders that folks were going to be watching. I saw him at Sunday Creek. He did a lot of uh, dominating riding there. We've seen him in years past. We know watching him come up through the packs, he's certainly a force to be reckoned with. And I'm sure right now he's uh, he's thinking, wow, Daxon's really been doing his homework. And uh, he's going to be looking for something, something in this moto and something in moto three that he might be able to pull out his bag of tricks to try and beat this guy. Bowie's been really impressed with Bennick's skills and also his buddy Hayden Deegan. They're around the same age and they battle year after year, usually on 65s. Last year, I remember they had a mud moto and they were battling for a championship and it was just real impressive to see them manage the track in the mud on 65s. The skills of these riders at these ages are crazy. That certainly goes for your leader, DeFrancesco as well. He's not afraid to twist it and do big things, but technically these riders are so precise and Bennick, it's going to be the tail of the stopwatch right here. Mm, he's Lap still time. faster. Another second he faster. He was faster. 1.2 seconds faster. The gap now, 3.3. He keeps clicking laps, laps off like this. Ryder D might see the shadows of that front wheel here pretty soon. So this is impressive. Daxton Bennick trying to run down. Ryder D. Francesco is up front. See the go past the Yamaha Mechanics area through the twisties. There's D. Francesco. Bennick just about got him in sight. Took a four and a half second lead down to three and a half by going. Actually, that lap was uh, 1.2 seconds faster. Yeah. And uh, looks like this lap might be on track to be about the same. Jason is uh, out of the comedic corner, goes second place. Dax and Bennick with only a small, well, a much smaller uh, margin of deficit there than what we saw two laps ago. Remember, Bennick had to work around and up through the pack, around Romano to get in position now. And he's been there for the last couple, well, that was the first solid lap, I think we could say, that he rode there because the last time when he beat, uh, had a, about a second faster lap, he was racing against Romano trying to get around him. Yeah, you're right. So even though he's making up ground, he was still slowed up a little bit. Now we're seeing the real speed. Got to figure that the pit board came out and told Ryder D. Can't manage this lead. You've got to step up the pace because Bennick is coming. Oh, a bunch of riders down here. That's the tunnel of love. Certainly isn't right now. No. It's a tunnel of dislike. The uh, 82 of uh, Talon Zollers. Mm. Uh, Illinois, one of the riders down. We go back to our leader, DeFrancesco. Uh, the Jimmy Johns backed Kawasaki. Real interesting. He actually has uh, represented uh, the sports agency, Kevin Harvick. The uh, NASCAR star has a sports agency, so Harvick represents himself, several MMA fighters, and that kid. Wow. It's a strange uh, thing, and uh, Ryder D told me that uh, there's even a company Christmas party, and he's in the picture. So you got a NASCAR driver, a bunch of the most intimidating, scary fighter dudes on earth, and him. And you see Ryder <laughs> D, he, he's in the 9 to 12 class, so he's, right. I, think, I think he's actually 13 now. But he's 13 going on 10 when you see him in pictures. He's far <laughs> from an intimidating presence. Well, Ryder D, uh, 207.9, not going to say he picked his pace up. Yeah, what any, happened to both of but them? But Daxton Bennett dropped his a little bit there as well to a 208.4. The gap still under four seconds right now between first and second. We see almost 10 seconds now back to third. And what happened to our third place ride? We watch Romano slipping away but all the way back to 10th place from third. So that's a big difference. DeFrancesco, he went from the 207 and basically stayed there. He lost a little ground on his lap time, but Bennick lost a lot 
Bennick almost two seconds slower than where he was the previous time around. So I don't know if somehow the track just magically got slower instantly on one lap, or if both of them made mistakes. Look at the gap now. Ryder D. Well, maybe he just got the word that Bennick was coming. That might have been the case. A very good point, Jason, as uh, already starting to see a few little lap markers there, but I don't think they're going to play any uh, anything into this race right now. So still a free and clear racetrack for our front two riders. I think this lap will tell the tale of whether or not Ryder D realizes just how fast Dax and Bennick was closing in. Look at that. Look how hard he's hitting those lines, man. Woo! Yeah, we mentioned those ruts, man. They get those hooks. Everybody breaks in the same spot. Everybody gets on the gas in the same spot. That digs a little hole. So the ruts are never really that smooth. A little bit easier in the sand here where the dirt will fall back on top of itself. But here is Benick. So we had two laps of glory, two laps of fury. We closed in on Ryder D. Now, oh, he took a look over his shoulder. We got a change back there in third. Chance Hymas is in a third place spot, and Romano, who was third, is now in tenth. So Romano must have gone down. He had a two minute, 32 second lap time. Most of the leaders are running uh, around the 210 mark. So Romano now, he's in big trouble, had that podium position. It's Chance Hymas, fellow Kawasaki pilot, taking advantage. He's in third. Casey Cocker moving up into the number four spot. Uh, that was uh, at the hands of that misfortune of Nick Romano as well as we Watch up front again, Ryder D, a 207.8, eight second lead, and there it is, 212. So a mistake made by Benick, and five plus seconds being lost on that lap of race. We talked about that five second, one little miscue would be five seconds, and that's basically, I believe, what happened to Daxton Benick right there. Yeah, so suddenly the gap is huge. So Benick, that was two laps where we can say, I feel like I can run with DeFrancesco's pace, but doing it consistently is a different story, and Ryder D just grinding it out. For DeFrancesco, it's gotta be nice to finally be the older guy in the class. I feel like it was several years here where he was nipping at the heels of some of the bigger, older riders. Now he's the one that gets to be the old man, so to speak, in the nine to 12 class. It's a lot easier managing a race out front like this. So Benick's okay, he didn't go down or anything like that, but no longer able to apply any pressure It'll be interesting to see what Romano can do as far as trying to make up for that lost ground that he sustained there after lap number five. Wow. Yeah, it has momentum, obviously, uh, getting slowed down quite a bit there for the 24. Oh, look at this, up onto the Rocky Mountain. Hymas already trying to strike here as we head into the heart of this race course. He gets a nice run on the outside over the step up to the Kawasaki Camelback. And look at this side by side as they roll into the Thor sweeper turn. Who's going to come out on top of this one? Looks like it's going to be Hymas. A 206.854 lap time for him right there. De Francesco has settled into a 209 after six laps of racing complete. We're now 13 minutes into this race, about seven minutes remaining as far as the battle is concerned. And as far as the clock is concerned, still a lot of time left for things to happen out there. And 10 seconds is going to be quite a bit to make up for Chance Hymas on DeFrancesco, but uh, I'm sure he's going to try the best he can. And I have to wonder if Daxton Bennett can maybe re uh, find and retune that rhythm that he had going on there in the early part of this race. And if he can, he might be able to re-challenge Chance Hymas for the number two spot. Looking at these Moto One results, uh, DeFrancesco took the Moto One win uh, Nick Romano, who we saw drop from third back to 10th, is now up to a number seven position. He finished second in Moto One. The 64 of Ryder McNabb is now running in an eighth place position after a struggle of uh, starts there. Preston Baseplug, the uh, 94 KTM, 
Uh, he is running back in the ninth place position here in Moto number two. He finished fourth in Moto one. Daxton Bennick, he finished fifth in Moto one. Currently running in the number three spot. So when you look at the uh, tail of the tape, I think Ryder D has got the lead and points obviously with this and could be quite a bit of a buffer zone going into Moto three. De Francesco, four championships here at Loretta's. Did it uh, twice on 50s, once on a 65, and last year won the 9 to 11 limited class on an 85. So, would love to come out of this event with two championships this week and make it six for the career. Part of that Bakersfield, California crew, Bakersfield bunch, they call them. Tons of riders all around the same age came out of there. Jet Reynolds, Styles Robertson. Here is Ryder D working through lap traffic now. Two lap card alert. I believe he'll be getting the two lap card next time he comes right. around as he heads around the Yamaha mechanics area now. It is uh, well past high noon now, so it is the dog days of summer. It's sun is out. We're still lucky we don't have the typical oppressive humidity, but it is it's warm, no doubt. So these guys are working for it. Next class should be a great one. We have a well, schoolboy one. 125, schoolboy, coming up next. I haven't looked at the forecast myself, but when Michael Lessie left out of here, he shook my hand and said, Randy, I'll see you later. And Randy? Yeah, no, he didn't really say that. But uh, anyway, yeah, yeah. he said, I'll see you later. He said, looks like it's going to get hot tomorrow. I think the temperature is going to be around 90, maybe a little hotter is what he said. He says, <laughs> enjoy the rest of the week. It's not going to be this nice. Tell Michael Lessie, I'm like, I'm going to leave you, but I'm going to drop this knowledge on you first. <laughs> I'm going to drop some knowledge on you before I leave. Okay. That I'm headed to the podium, Rodney. All righty, we'll take it on home as Ryder D is headed that way himself. Lap number seven in the history books now. And the uh, white flag, I believe, may be getting ready to fly or already flying now as we look at our finish line flagger. Had two lap card alert, so maybe that's what's going to be coming up. We're going to wait until we see when Ryder D checks in here in about... 20 seconds as he makes his way off the Rocky Mountain Sweeper and the Rocky Mountain itself and right into the heart of this race course as we pick up in the Thor Sweeper turn down low on the inside. As we said, a lot of riders utilizing that area of race course for the fast line today. And with that, I think my batteries died in that one mic. Sorry about that. But Ryder D on his way back through now with eight laps complete. And as we uh, told you, the two lap board is out on this one. Chance Hymas, five seconds back in second. Daxton Bennick holding steadily in third right now. Uh, looking at about a 9.3 second gap between second and third. You got to commend Daxton Bennick as he testing the waters as Jason Wygant was talking earlier and these waters appear to be in his favor. He had a little mistake there but uh, nonetheless he is still going to be a uh, contender I think in years to come here in these uh, classes. We see Casey Cochran still in the fourth place position. Colin Long or Colin Allen rounds out the top five with Avery Long in sixth. Ryder McNabb the 64 machine is back there in the number seven spot. Romano is dropped to eighth now. Romano has dropped to 11th now and still not checked in with eight laps complete. So Romano was getting himself back in the game, it appeared. And all of a sudden, he is back out of this one. So uh, tough break there. Romano checking in eight laps in 11th place position, turning a 231 lap time that last time around. Frustration, frustration, frustration for the number 41. Ryder D, though, on the other hand, is putting it all together. And like poetry in motion, we've seen him out front virtually unpressured since the beginning of this race and has just basically put some textbook lines together, hitting his marks out there, hitting those lines. We saw a few little, I wouldn't call them miscues, but uh, saw the full effect of what this racetrack certainly brings to Little Rider D and the rest of this field out there. As we uh, hit the uh, final turn for one more lap to go, white flag is out. 
DeFrancesco. Chance Hymas checking in in the number two spot. And Daxton Bennick, as we said. There's some big gaps. If you look uh, between second and third, there's almost 10 seconds. Between third and fourth, back to Cochran, 10 seconds. Another nine, almost 10 seconds back to the fifth place position as well. So rather, I think, interesting the way that uh, breaks down. These guys uh, so tight and so competitive in the early part of this moto. It just goes to show you, I think, how much they exert. And uh, the harder they work, obviously, and the more effort they're putting in, sometimes the mistakes are compounded. And that may be why those uh, gaps are opening up out there. But Ryder D not worried about a gap right now as he is on his way home to a checker flag in about a minute. We'll see him crossing this finish line right in front of the announcer's tower. Meanwhile, backside of uh, Storyland now as he heads under the Suzuki banner into the waterworks now. And like Jason Wygant said, four titles to his credit, working on two more here in 2018. And it's rides like this that make things like that come to fruition. And Ryder D is certainly uh, ready to pick that fruit, I'm sure. Hymas Bennick, Cochran, and Allen, your top five is what we'll expect to see as we wrap up this 85, 9 to 12 year old class. We see that. Schoolboy 1, 12 to 17 BC will be coming up with a gate drop scheduled at 4.30 this afternoon. And here he is, fist pump in the air. One more time for Ryder D. So a moto win, that's two of them for the number two. Chance Hymas will finish up in second. Third place to Daxton Bennett. Again, the tail of the tape for moto number one. Hymas took a seventh place finish in moto one, so he goes seven two into moto three. Daxton Bennett, the 24 machine, looking at a five three. Casey Cochran, the 66 machine, looking at a six four. So really, Ryder D's got a lot of buffer out there heading into that third and final moto. Chance Hymas again finishing second as we look at the Rocky Mountain. Top 10 leaderboard, Hymas Bennett, Cochran following uh, DeFrancesco there, Cor Colin Allen in fifth, Avery Long in sixth, and Ryder McNabb seventh, Parker Ross in eighth, Matty Argerson in ninth, and Preston Base Plug rounding out your top 10 as we uh, head down to that Race Tech podium where Jason Wygan stands by to uh, talk to our top three. Yep, this guy knows the podium drill as well as anyone here at the ranch. He's been here many, many, many times working on what could be a fifth career championship at the ranch and he does it the right way start to finish pulled the old holy in that one bell helmet's going to hook him up with a hundred dollar gift card for that got the podium gogs let's hear it for your whole shot winner and your race winner Ryder d francesco Hey, Ryder D, there were about two laps there where uh, Benick was in second and actually closing up a little bit. Did you find out that was happening because then you really started to wheelie away or did it just take you a few laps to get going? Whatever it was, you started to pull away after about four laps. Yeah, um, got off to the lead and uh, really tried something different there. Um, kind of slow up a little bit and uh, try to finesse my lines and just make them perfect. And I think like lap four, I got that. So um, that's when I started pulling away and uh, my dollop tires hook up great off the start and um, got off to this win. All right. Who do you want to thank, man? Uh, my mom, my dad, my mechanic, Kua, uh, Jimmy Johns, Monster Energy, Pro Circuit, Kawasaki, um, Jimmy Johns, Renthal, 60 Helmets, Scott Goggles, Alpine Stars, Troy Designs, um, Ethica, Razor, um, whoever forgot, thank you. All right, another Moto win for Ryder D. And he gets his uh, bell helmet's uh, photo there, and then we'll move to the rest of our podium. 
Looking for second. Let's bring our second place finisher on up. There he is. This is a hard-earned silver medal. Had to make a bunch of passes to get it. Still says super chunk on the butt patch. I'm surprised. He's not really, might be super. I don't know about chunk anymore. Second place, let's hear it for Chance Hymas. All right, they're still going with Chunk. The nickname hasn't gone away. Nope. Are you still super? Yeah. All right. Take me through that moto, man. You had to make some moves, had to make some passes. Well, I got to a good jump. My dumb left ties are always hooking up. And when I got out, everyone just got out in front of me, so I came around mid-pack. And then I made four or five moves, moves in the next two corners. And I just tried to go for first, but got second. It's all right, man. Who do you want to thank? Um, my mom, my dad. Everyone at Team Green Kawasaki, Monster Energy, Fly Racing, Scott, Alpine Star, Atlas, Pocatello Power Sports, Western Power Sports. Um, everyone I forgot, thank you. There it is, folks. Chance Hymas, second place. And we look for the bronze medalist, taking third place on up. He gave it a run for a few laps, kept uh, Ryder D. Francisco honest and ends up with the bronze on the number 24, Orange Brigade KTM. Let's hear it for Daxton Benick. Good job, Dax. I know you're jumping up to the 85 this year, uh, just getting some confidence to run with these guys for a few laps. Is that cool? Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good so far, so yeah. For a few laps, you're making a run. I don't know if you could see Ryder up ahead. Could you get him in your sights a little bit? Yeah, I just kept on riding my, doing my thing, and I kept him a closer and closer and then my arms started getting really pumped up and uh just almost couldn't hang on and just started riding smooth and smart yep, yep. held on for a podium this time who do you want to thank for it uh lord jesus christ keep me safe ktm orange brigade lynx motors dunlop tires scott goggles curly designs power band suspension lynx racing nahilo and everyone else thank you Let's hear it for third place, Daxton Benick. 